I'm gonna make some statements today that might sound like duh statements, but unless you've been told, you may not know. You may not realize the truth of these statements. <clears throat> so here's the first one. There are some really good churches out there. And as I say that, I'm thinking of churches that I know of, that I'm aware of, that are good churches that are doing amazing things for the kingdom and for their community. They have good reputations and good standings in their cities and towns and, and in the denominations, people talk very highly about those churches. But on the flip side, there are some bad churches, churches with bad reputations, churches that that are very self-centered and about me, churches that, that haven't handled situations real well, churches that, that don't have good reputations. You know, churches are made up of people and there are some amazing Christian people. I'm thinking of one right now, a couple in the church that I serve in. They are the most amazing people. I, I wish God would have just cloned a ton of them. I mean, they, they approach their Christianity and they approach their Christian witness and they approach life and people and family and friends and ministry. I mean, they just, everything in their life, they just do it right and they do it for the glory of God. But then there's some really bad people sitting in churches. And I'm not saying like bad because they're sinners. I, I'm saying, you know, they're self-centered. They're, they're power hungry. You know, they have their own agenda. They always cause issues and problems in the church. You know, um, people know their reputation. They know their agendas. You don't want them people serving on, on boards and committees or having control or power of situations. There's some really good pastors. I have been blessed beyond measure that when I first came out of mid-America, the man who hired me, Pastor Jordan, amazing man. One of my ministry heroes to this day, a man that I still am in communication with and still see on occasion, a, a man who, who I know loves me and prays me, prays for me and supports me. You know, he was the best guy to work under. And then when I left there and, and went to uh, Southwest Ohio, man, I, I had another great pastor, Pastor Reynolds, and, and I have one regret about Pastor Reynolds. Um, when he hired me, he said, I'm gonna retire in three years, and I still went on board, and we had this great three years together, and my regret is that I didn't have more time with him. And, and Pastor Reynolds, again, one of my ministry heroes, and, and I think about, other pastors uh, who are great pastors and great preachers and great leaders and, and those that I look up to and those who I let pour into my life and those who mentor me and those that, that I follow in ministry and those guys are great. When you find those guys, man, cling on to them. But when you flip that coin over, there are some bad pastors, people who really shouldn't be leading churches. People who um, have their own agendas, people who approach their ministry as a job and not a ministry, people who make really bad leadership decisions, people who can't control the congregation and, and control the church. Uh, they're bad at preaching, they're bad at management, they're, they just are bad. So, you know, when, when you find good churches and you find good people and you find good pastors, you want to run to them, you want to work with them, you want to serve them, you want to cling to them. You, you want to be a part of that, and that's a good thing. But what do you do when it's a bad church or it's bad people or it's a bad pastor? Years ago, I met a man named Claiborne. He was a senior pastor. And, and when I met Claiborne, he was like 60 years old, coming to the end of his ministry. And, and uh, 
Claiborne is a, a an African American brother and and pastor in African American church and and one day I asked him Claiborne had this great relationship I just asked that guy anything and and one day I said Claiborne <clears throat> why is it that white pastors in white churches you know we stay three five maybe seven years and then we leave but in in a black church their pastors are there for 20 25 30 35 years they spent a whole career serving one congregation and, and you yourself Claiborne you've been at this church for 20 plus years and the guy before you was 25 and the guy before him was like 20 or 25 like you're the third pastor in this church that's you know 75 years old and and he said you know Jeremy when I first got into ministry and I first came to this church I almost didn't stay I said what happened and he said, there was a man who was a thorn in my side. And I said, well, what, what'd you do? And he said, well, I looked at this man, I looked at me and you know, here I'm in my forties and, and this guy was well into his late sixties, almost seventies. And I thought, I can outlive this man. He won't be a thorn in my side for very much longer. And maybe that's shocking and harsh in reality, but, but that's one of the choices you have when you come into a situation where it's a bad church, bad people, or, or maybe a bad pastor or bad staff. You, you can run. You can leave that church immediately, which I, I will confess. I did that in one of my ministries. It, it was a bad pastor and a, a bad staff situation, and, and I opted to leave the church. I opted to walk away from, from that ministry because I did not want to be a part of, of that pastoral leadership any longer. Um, you, can, you can wait them out like Pastor Claiborne did, and, and you can wait for you know, them to die. Uh, you can wait for them to leave. Uh, you can wait for things to change. Or, or you can weed them out. And sometimes those are hard conversations to, to, to talk to people and say, you, you can no longer serve in this capacity. You can no longer be in this leadership role. You know, maybe it's time for you to find another church that you fit better, that you work better with. And, and those are really hard conversations to have. But the reality is sometimes those things have to happen. Sometimes you have to leave or sometimes, you know, you have to wait for things to change or, or sometimes you have to have that hard conversation. I, I have some situations in my life <clears throat> and uh, there was a person in one of my ministries and, and they were a thorn in my side and, and they wanted to control me and control my ministry and to the point like I didn't even like seeing them come. It, it was just painful and age caught up to them and they started to voluntarily resign their positions of leadership and they still attended the church but age caught them and, and they, they mellowed and they were less concerned about things that, that they used to get uptight about and they just kind of eventually left me alone. There was a, a situation where um, another family in the church for 30 years had really influenced and, and controlled and was always in leadership at this congregation and uh, it just kind of got to the point <clears throat> where uh, the the congregation kind of knew like oh they're going to be elected they're going to be nominated they're going to serve um and, and the church just kind of gave in and 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 they just weren't good at leadership and they had their own agendas and and they were forceful with those agendas and uh kind of nobody knew how to deal with that <clears throat> and uh a decision was made in our church and they strongly opposed that decision and and they came to me and and talked with me about it and and kind of their response was if that decision stands and you're not going to do anything about it then we're we're going to leave the church and you know my response was you know the decision's going to stand and this is the direction that that we're going to go and you know you and i have a difference of opinion and you know if this is your decision to take your family and, and, and go elsewhere you know I, I you know i i will respect that and that family left the church and, and it was about a month later 
and a, 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 a lady in the church came up to me and a church, church leader, a woman who is very faithful, very supportive. And she said, I've noticed that this family has not been around for a while. And I said, yeah, they've made the decision to leave the church and they're attending another church. And she said to me, the spirit of this place is different and it's good. It's not always easy. Those decisions are tough. When I chose to leave that ministry because I didn't want to be a part of, of poor pastoral leadership um, and I didn't think that the, the pastor at that time was, was good, um, that wasn't an overnight decision. That was, was uh, about a year or more in the making before I made the decision to leave. And having hard conversations and, and, and letting somebody leave the church, um, even though it's a good thing, that's still a hard thing. Um, but you're going you're gonna to have to face these things. And, and everything that I talked about today, uh, good pastors and, and, and bad people and good churches and, and bad pastors and all those things and those decisions you're going to have to make, that's going to happen if you're in ministry and it's not gonna happen just once, it's gonna happen through the course of your ministry. So, so take what I've shared today and uh, start to mull that over and start to think those things through so that when those things pop up, you're at least a little bit ready. You've at least thought this thing through. Um, you kind of know your, your options. Hey, have a great rest of your day. I love you and I'm praying for you and I hope that God blesses you as you enter into and serve in ministry. Bye-bye.